Have you ever purchased a pen that looks amazing, but you're not too sure how to use it? Zebra Pens came out with this new product, the Mild Liner Mix Pen, and it's blown my mind. At first, I wasn't sure how I was going to use these dual colored pens, but once I started creating, the ideas kept coming. Join me as I unbox these pens and show you not one, but seven different projects using these pens. You might be asking yourself, why should you want another art pen for your creative practice? Because this one will do things that no other art pen can do. These mild liner mix pens come with two separate ink barrels that will mix to create a two color blend when applied to paper. This is unique to this pen and opens so many creative possibilities. So you first get these ones, you're gonna notice that you're gonna have a white tip. It's not gonna have any color coming from it. So this is where you need to press down. And you'll notice that the first press I have, I have a tiny little bit of color that's going to come down. So the key with this is you gotta press these a bit just to help the color work its way down. So we're starting to get little bits of the yellow. And the more we push, the better color we're getting. So before I ever use these in a project, I always try to create a sample in my book. So we're gonna start with the lavender and summer green, lavender and fuchsia, fuchsia in pink. This is magenta and apricot. We have a red and gold and the coral pink and lemon yellow. And look how amazing these colors are. So the key with these tips is realizing that uh, they're basically have a little like almost like a pump action. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it where basically you have the two colors that have that are in the nib and they are mixing to be put out on the piece of paper. So they're gonna be a tiny bit wobbly the moment you lift it. So while you're writing, it's fine, but it's almost as you push it down, you're gonna feel a little bit of wobble. And then as you lift, you're gonna feel a little bit of wobble as it engages and doesn't engage. And I find that if I do something like this, you really do need to be tipped down first. So you need to be very aware of how you're doing your strokes. So that's just something to make sure that you can get really good results with these pens. They're a little bit of a different animal. So it's understanding how they work so you get the best results. They technically are supposed to be a highlighter. That's actually what's on them, but you don't have to use them for just for highlighting. I love just using them in my art projects just to create even just swirly shapes. Cause I'm gonna come in and turn this into a piece of art. And this is where you can take advantage of just their nature because instead of having to do two colors, you have one color that's working beautifully together. So if you do any sort of neurographic art, this is a fun one. So there's a lot of different directions that we could take this art piece. You could fill in the areas with other colors of highlighters, add in journaling, or start this as a background layer to a bigger piece. Today, I wanted to play around with doodling and using this as a therapeutic practice. Using a black zebra click art pen and a Sarasa porous pen, I'm adding in some of my favorite doodling patterns. This is an easy way to turn some very basic doodles into a beautiful art piece. This could be easily created in a book, on a card, or on a different project. The possibilities for this technique are endless. So flowers are a fun and easy way to incorporate mild liner mix pens into a project. So let's start with a sketchy rose. Start with a tiny little C shape in the center, then add another C shape starting from the center of that first C shape. Then start building out, creating slightly larger shapes, making the C's more curved and larger as they go out from the center. So for the first few shapes, I'm only using the tip of the chisel nib. This means I'm only getting one color. But as the shapes get larger, you'll start creating the beautiful color mixes. The key to this technique is making sure that you stagger all the petals. Think about how a real rose looks, how each petal sits overlapping the next petal. Some of the petals can be larger or smaller, but for the best success with this rose style, stick to smaller roses. The compact look makes them look very pretty and really tidy. You can create leaves around your rose by connecting two curved shapes that connect and then fill the shape in with strokes from your pen. I love the look of the spring green and lavender and how it creates an interesting and beautiful textured leaf. So if you find the idea of this rose a little complex, we'll start with another even easier rose called the scribbly rose. So all you need to do is start at the center and start swirling outward with your mild liner mix pen. 
Repeat over the surface several times, leaving gaps of white, but also having strong areas of color. This is a very sketchy and loose way to create a rose. Add in some black dots to the center of the flower using a black zebra click art pen. Because the centers were a little bit too late for me, I came in with a fuchsia and pink pen to add a little dots of color to the center of those flowers. And to finish off this flower, you just use that summer green and lavender pen and make sure that you keep the leaf shapes very sketchy with lots of white areas. Uh, this gives that whole sketchy feel to the entire card. I love adding in those finishing touches with the little dots using the Black Zebra Click Art Pen. It's always those small details that make a project feel finished. So let's throw in one more flower design, Loose Lavender. Lavender is a very simple and easy flower to create using the Zebra Mod Liner Mix Pens. All you need to do is add in three wavy curves that intersect, then add in small dashes and groups to create the lavender flowers. If you've ever seen lavender, the flowers are almost like in these little bunches, and there's a small area of the stem that's, that doesn't have any flowers, and then more bunches. So it's a super easy and beautiful way to create a card using these pens that looks really, really nice, and it's super easy. The final finishing touch to these cards is to add a nice sediment or a quote. A couple of nice stamps and an archival ink pad can be the final touch to create these beautiful cards. But what happens if you make a mistake and you stamp them upside down like I did? I did it upside down. I didn't realize that was upside down. Oh no. Then all you need to do to fix it is to stamp your sediment onto a piece of paper, cut it out, rim it with the mild liner mix pens and attach it to your card and it looks just as nice. Another thing I love about these mild liner mix pens is that if you want to sketch with shapes, these are the perfect pens. Just for the sake of experimentation, I created a grid background using the lavender and fuchsia and the lavender and summer green mild liner mix pens. You could create super tight grids, diamond shapes, dots, or mark making to create beautiful backgrounds. But then I was curious to see what would happen if I layered the mild liner mix pens on top of the grid background. Using the same technique as I did on the cards, but in a larger size, I added in those scribbly roses again. It took a bit more work and a few more layers to have them pop a bit more, but I'm really happy with the results. So even after completing this drawing, I felt like it was falling a bit too far to the background. This is where the Zebra Click Art Pens come to the rescue. Adding some black swirls around the flowers and the leaves and adding a black stamped image helps finish off and elevate this piece. I couldn't share with you about these pens without using them with one of my favorite tools, the stencil. To get the best results, use a stencil with large open areas. For this journal page, I'm using a Dilutions Hexagon Stencil. Stencils open a lot of creative possibilities with the mild liner mix pens, especially if you don't like to draw freehand. The hexagon shape is so fun for creating a whole page of repeating shapes. Using the mild liner mix pen, I outlined from the edge, making sure to rotate to make sure that all the outer color was the same on each side. Then I started adding layers and layers of this pen inside the stenciled image. What a beautiful result. It was such a simple idea, but just so effective. And what's really nice about this technique is it took half the pen strokes that you would usually make for a project like this. So after we cover the page with hexagon using these pens, what can we do from here? This is where the mixed media element comes in. Going through my stash of stencils and using black paint, I added in imagery to some of the hexagons. I love the contrast between the color and the black paint but I didn't feel like it was quite finished. So to finish this off, I outlined the hexagons in black and added in black text with my Zebra Click Art pen. The final touch was to use the Mod Liner Mix Spring Green and Lavender pen to write text for my page title. So can you use these pens for coloring? Absolutely. Let's play around with one of my printables that is available in my shop. If you haven't checked out my shop, please do. I have a lot of printables from my own pen and ink drawings that I've made available. If you're looking for the perfect image for your next project, check it out in the description below. So basically without having to add in all of those lines, and it helps when you're working on something a little bit bigger. And this is the thing is it takes a little while to figure out how to get those highlighter to, to work exactly the way you want it to because it is a little finicky just because it's not meant to be a fine line marker, but look how cool that looks. Um, you're basically creating all these shades and all we're having to do is do pen strokes. 
And so like, how fun is that? So we're creating a lot of interest and a lot of contrast without really having to put a lot of work into our drawings. And they're a little bit hard to control along the edges. And this is where I often will just go down and let them mix a little bit more than they're supposed to. I'm not always using the flat edge just so that I can create that contrast that I'm looking for. So if you like doing flowers and you want to be really quick about it, this is not a bad way of doing it. So for the center, I'm also going to be using these as well too, because I really think that the red and gold is going to work really nicely for the center. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go out in a circle. And yes, there are some white spots in here, but just bear with me. I'm going to start playing around with these edges. So again, if you're in these tight little spots, feel free to just use just the tip of it. For this one, I'm actually using Hammer Mill uh, card stock. I like the Hammer Mill because it really has the feeling of uh, the same feeling of Bristol paper, but is a lot cheaper. So it's been something I recently discovered and I've been using it a lot in my art practice just because then you get the nice smooth blends and you don't have to necessarily pay Bristol cardstock prices. Instead, you can go a little bit cheaper and still get a really great result. This is where if you're finding you're not loving where things are going, like I didn't really love how I started that out, you can always adjust it like so. And then if you feel like you want these colors to meld a little bit more together, you can always go over them a second time. But that's going to give me a more contrasting center to the sunflower. I do find that these pens aren't fantastic for working with tiny flowers and really fine work, but for covering large areas quickly while creating contrast and texture to your image, they are amazing. You can see as I color, it takes a minimal amount of strokes to fill an image. So after using the first layer of color, you can add in some shading or other details. So my first layer of color was using the coral pink and lemon yellow marker, but then I chose to add in additional highlights with the red and gold pen. This was a page that I was just adding in layers, adding in stencils, adding in all sorts of stuff, just to experiment and see and see what I could come up with. So I have a lot of different colors going on. So maybe what I want to do is come in and add in some areas of the pink pen. In it. And because I'm working on gesso, it's coming out a little bit different. Uh, you're not getting quite the same definition, but this is, I think, the fuchsia and the pink together. So there's a reason why it's not coming out quite as strong as I kind of expected it to. But what's nice about it is I'm adding it on top of the yellow, which I find a little bold. So now we're making that yellow a little bit more orange, which I'm personally liking. So there's no reason you can't use these on other surfaces. It's just you gotta be careful not to wreck pen nibs. Like I think these work the best on good smooth paper. That's what I found is like, I like them on my hammer mill. I like them on uh, some of my more smooth papers. They're going to do the best. You're not gonna have issues with wrecking the nibs, but some of this was to see how far I could take this and seeing what I could create. And this is also where you could use these for mark making, where even just putting those dots down, they're gonna have a different look because they're gonna have the multiple colors all together. So you don't always have to think of this as being only for drawing. You can look at this as being, well, you can do all sorts of neat mark making areas. And then that's gonna help this feel like it has a bit more cohesion instead of just a colored area. So again, pretty bold background, but that's okay. Sometimes, you know, you gotta play around in your art journal. You gotta experiment. You gotta see what works and what doesn't work. And maybe you're like, well, that was really not my thing. This is an experimental class I was taking about well, add a bunch of layers, see what's going to happen. And so I did see what was going to happen. And some of it I love and some of it I don't love quite as much. So, you know, some of this is just figuring it out. I do want to try to bring in this image. So we're looking at it and going like, well, is it helping that image or is it hurting that image? Uh, do I want to, I do want to leave some areas white, but it's almost like now that I've started adding in color, this is starting to pop more. And so I have some strong lines in here so why not add in the color here and that combination actually looks really good and because you have a lot more contrast between the colors you can see it and you can see it's working okay on top of paint which i wasn't sure if it was going to or not that's part of the reason i wanted to try it was just to see it's like is it is it gonna work is it gonna do what i'm hoping it's gonna do um, again, this is a pretty busy page, so maybe adding in more busy dual colored pens, maybe maybe this is not your thing, but I thought, well, why not try it 
At this point, this page I have nothing to lose with because I don't even know what I wanted to do with it anyways. It was one of those ones I went, okay, threw a bunch of stuff down. And sometimes I do this is I, I, I've kind of moved away from the whole like, there's a lot of people who have the mentality of, well, you just throw color down and then you'll come up with something where I realize I prefer to plan my page more. Um, but I would love to know what you think. Do you like to just create random backgrounds and then uh, figure out a page focus and journaling and everything for it after? Or do you prefer figuring it out beforehand? Uh, there's no harm in either. The question kind of comes down to like, how do you like to work? And I'd be quite curious to see what your thoughts are. Do you prefer starting with a project? Or do you prefer just starting with an idea? And so that's pretty cool. So let's, let's put this on. So yeah, I feel like that's already looking a lot better. And I almost wonder if I just want to go in this pen a little bit more and maybe bring in some of these marks here too. And this is where, you know, you can make larger marks as well. And it's gonna be different when you've already added them to an area that already has color. Yeah, this is a lot of pattern, but why not? And this is where I could, if I really didn't like this, I could come in with some white paint and just lighten up the whole thing. But in this case, we're just gonna leave it. I'm just gonna play around with the mark making. So it shows you that it works on paint as well. It's not as vibrant. You're not getting quite the same amount of contrast, but it does work. I think sometimes we, we limit ourselves too much when it comes to colors. So sometimes it's fun just to play around and, and see what we can create. So after I was happy with that feeling of that background, I decided to add in my sunflower using sequin tape. Using archival ink and getting some of my favorite letter stamps, I stamped on my quote. But sometimes when you're working on a super uneven surface with so many layers, the ink doesn't want to stick to the page. This is where the black click art pen comes to the rescue again. It's a great pen for adding more color to the black letters and I was able to save this project. As you can see, there are so many ways that you can use these Zebra Mild Liner Mix Pens in your art practice. They are fantastic for planners, for highlighting in books, and just for writing with. But that's just the tip of the iceberg for amazing projects that you can create. So check out the description below for where you can purchase these Mild Liner Mix Pens, plus all the links to the rest of the materials used in this video. Anytime you purchase from one of these links, it supports this channel at no additional cost to you. So thank you so much for your support. Also, make sure you check out my new shop for beautiful images for your next project. And if you're looking for a new pen for your creative projects, check out this video to see a variety of beautiful art materials from Zebra Pens. I not only share about the pens, but also many ideas on how you can use these in your art project. So I'll see you in the next video.